The West Mesa Bone Collector is a chilling name for a serial killer, but what's even scarier is the fact that he or she has never been caught. In this episode, we're digging into the West Mesa murders, a string of killings nobody knew it even happened until a woman walking her dog came across a femur bone sticking out of the ground in Albuquerque's West Mesa in 2009. Her call to police led to the gruesome discovery of the remains of 11 women and one unborn child. Their bodies were in shallow graves scattered across a 100-acre plot of land being prepared for development. As each set of remains was identified, an eerie pattern revealed itself. Almost all of the women were Hispanic, all of them had connections to prostitution and drugs, and they'd all been reported missing between 2002 and 2005. But it's been a decade since the grisly discovery, and still, no one has been charged in connection with the murders. We can't manufacture evidence. We can't make people talk to us. We've got to proceed with good quality police work and investigative work. For the families of the victims, it's been a long wait for justice. When she was missing, I didn't want to face the reality that she was gone. I just assumed she was still alive and just didn't want to come home. There are six to eight other women who went missing from 2001 to 2006 with backgrounds similar to the West Mesa victims. The community and the police fear they may have also been killed by the West Mesa bone collector. To not ever know, there's, that's hard. There's speculation that a second dump site might be out there, and that idea didn't seem so far-fetched when a construction crew unearthed a skeleton not far from the West Mesa crime scene. It definitely a little deja vu. It looks a little different, but the feel is the same. There's enough there for us to cause concern that it could be related. This case will not stop until we actually apprehend somebody. Despite no new updates in the past several years, police do have a handful of suspects, and there are two names at the top of their list. First is Joseph Blea. He's currently serving a 90-year prison sentence for several sexual assaults. He owned a landscaping business, and his former wives claimed he would make trips to the West Mesa late at night to dump landscaping debris. He allegedly knew and hired a few of the West Mesa victims. The other suspect, Lorenzo Montoya, was shot dead in December 2006. Coincidentally, the same year, the unusual disappearances seemed to stop. He had a history of violence, and on the night he was killed, Montoya had hired an escort. Investigators say once they were in his trailer, he tied her up and killed her. Montoya was in the process of disposing the body when the girl's boyfriend, who'd been waiting nearby in his car, approached the trailer, confronted Montoya, and shot him in self-defense. Even if police chose to charge one of these suspects, there's a chance the West Mesa killer could walk. Here to explain why is investigative reporter Nancy Laughlin from Albuquerque news station KOAT. We have a six-year statute of limitation, which has been a huge point of controversy. And law enforcement, they've gone repeatedly to legislators to try and get that changed, but it's still six years. And in this case, it would, you know, it's it's there's a lot of what-ifs, like if they ever do make an arrest what would that person be charged with? Would it be first degree murder? And there is no statute of limitations on that, but second degree, it's six years here. So that means if police narrow down and arrest a suspect, there would possibly be a chance that person could walk. Like I said, it's controversial that we do have that six year statute of limitations, but that's for second degree. There is no statute on first. So there's a lot of what ifs there. It would again, depend on the evidence, depend on what they can come up with and then but the, that person would be, or people would be charged with. Why has it taken police so long to make an arrest in this case? Was it a lack of pressure because the victims were tied to drugs and sex work or just a lack of evidence? I don't know if you have any insight into that. There are still two full-time detectives who are working on this case. The people that they've looked at that they thought were responsible, one of them is dead. So another person they were looking at, he's serving, um, a 90-year prison sentence right now for a completely different crime. So they're still looking into this. A construction crew thought they had found a second dump site that could be related to these murders. Is that right? 
That is correct. Um, the construction crews who go out there and work in this area, because it's still part of the city that's being developed. And so they're specially trained to look for anything unusual. And they did find human remains. But that turned out to be an ancient Indian burial site, which we have a lot of uh, in the state as well. So not in any way tied to the, the West Mesa murders. Would you say that that really brought the case back into the public eye? Um, and have there been any updates or are you expecting any updates in the West Mesa murders? It always seems like every year there there is something that brings this case back up into the spotlight. I know we had a memorial for the victims and they're always remembered every year. And their family members still try and keep it up in the public. They put up crosses with the names of the victims and personal messages for their children and for their grandchildren and for other relatives. It's something that's had a huge impact on this community. And we do have, it's no secret, we have a, a big crime problem here. But this case in particular, I think people are really um, passionate about finding out what happened to these women. Well, thank you so much for talking with us, Nancy. A really important story. All right, guys, be safe. What do you think about this case? Do you have any theories about who the killer might be? Let us know what you think in the comments below. I'm Alexandra Stone, and this has been your Weekly Dispatch. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Stitch for new episodes of Dispatches from the Middle.